The Game Changers Incorporated presents Eric Bowles. As the leader of the Game Changers Incorporated, Eric travels the globe sharing his powerful and challenging insights on leadership, peak performance, managing and leading change, teamwork, and cultural transformation. Besides keynoting meetings and events, both domestically and internationally, Eric is also a trainer, consultant, and executive coach. His leadership and employee development programs have been translated into seven different languages for clients around the world. Prior to his corporate work, Eric played in the National Football League for the New York Jets and Green Bay Packers, where he was introduced to many of the principles of high performance he shares today. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I had a coach. Never forget my rookie year. Training camp was rough. And uh, my coach never called me by my name. His name was Al Roberts. He would go, number 18. I was like, yes, coach. He says, I want you to know something. I said, yes, coach. He says, you got a lot of potential. I was like, thank you, coach. It means a lot. He said, don't thank me. It just means you haven't done anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, inspirational speeches and, and messages, but I will tell you, even in my football playing days, uh, I had a coach, and I'm not gonna actually name that coach, <laughs> but I had a coach who, uh, you know, he'd come in at halftime, he'd scream and yell, he'd try to get us fired up. And it was great, you know, I mean, we, but the problem was we went out into the second half, more excited, more fired up than ever, and just made the same mistakes with more intensity. Okay. So sometimes it's not motivation that you need, it's a change of direction, okay? Coaches, leaders in this room, we need to create an environment on the teams that we lead that eliminate the fear of failure from the equation. There's a natural fear of failure. Nobody wants to just fail. But we need to remove that fear of failure because we're going to get more of the potential that's actually in the people that we lead. Ideas that have been swimming around people's minds, but they're scared to say it out loud. Uh, chances, conversations, uh, uh, all kinds of things. We're sitting on it. Everything you all need to go to the next level, you already have. It's already in your hand. I promise you, there's a wealth of potential on the teams that you lead. And the key is how do I tap into it? One of the ways you tap into it, you got to get fear of failure out of the way. What's a practical way of doing that for you as a leader? Will you please start sharing with your team your failures? The failures that you've overcome. See, the challenge sometimes is as we grow in leadership, guess what coaches do and leaders do too often? We get amnesia. We forget about our own mistakes. We forget about all the mess ups we had. And instead of using them as learning moments for our team members, we don't share them. So then they start playing not to make a mistake. When we need people making mistakes faster, we need to fail faster. We don't need to avoid failure. We need to be failing faster than we've ever failed before because that's the new reality we're living in. Is this making sense? The scoreboard is a lagging indicator. It is not a leading indicator. It is an effect. It is not the cause. It's the fruit. It is not the root. And when I deal with leaders who understand that, they will have consistent progress going up. When they look at the members of their team, they don't wonder, oh, are we just winning? They also wonder, are my people growing? Are they getting better? Are they growing in all kinds of ways? I'm telling you right now, it is hard to leave a coach. It is hard to leave a leader who helps you grow personally. This whole issue about engagement, you want to solve engagement? Get leaders serious about their people's individual and personal growth. You will see the most engaged group of uh, employees you have ever seen. Those are the kind of teams nobody wants to play. People don't quit jobs, they quit bosses. You give me a good boss, oh. And what makes them a good boss? I, they sincerely want my growth to happen. Don't mean they're always saying nice things to me. I don't need nice things. Nice things don't make me grow. I said all the time, I mean, cheerleaders are great, but I've yet to see them cause a team to win. No offense to anybody who's cheerleading here, okay? <laughs> but coaching does. And sometimes coaching causes sparks to fly. As long as you're coaching from where their potential is. I will say it right now. There is a leader in here working with someone on your team 
That individual on your team may be your top performer, but they are not maximizing their potential. And if you don't call them on that, their talent, th the way we say it this way, too often we allow being good to get in the way of being great. We allow being good enough to get in the way of being great enough. Real leadership, when we start raising the bar to a level we haven't seen before, is when leaders are not satisfied, even with those who are doing good, because they realize their talent, they should be doing great. So let's coach them there. That's where we want to lead them. Now, I will be honest with you, it is hard as a leader, as a coach, to ask for something that you're not doing yourself. It is hard to ask for something that you're not practicing. It is hard to ask for something that you are not practicing. So the first filter, the first criteria before I ask for anything in terms of growth from my people, am I growing myself? Am I, what am I doing to get better? What am I doing to stretch myself? What am I doing to unleash more of the potential that I have? I'm telling you, this is next level. I want you to feel what it's like anytime you're about to take on something new. Why is that important? As great as your success currently is, it is now your comfort zone. That's not a big, bad thing, but it is now your comfort zone. And my question to you is, when's the last time you felt butterflies in your stomach? When's the last time you've been afraid? When's the last time you've been really nervous? When's the last time you had to really go, whew, okay, I'm gonna go for it. If it's been a long time, that means it's been far too long. The next opportunity, the next level of greatness you're gonna experience is when you personally are willing to also put yourself in position to be afraid, to be a little nervous. Man, that's exciting. Coming alive, not, not getting bored. And the reason why it's so significant, every single time you go to another level, look how many people are impacted when you do. It's not just about you. Leaders in this room, it's bigger than you. Look at the number of people you all touch. So every single time you move your own performance and become more effective, there are thousands of people positively impacted. So it's beyond just you. I don't just like keynoting, I love keynoting. I love the engagement with the audience. I love communicating a message and not only communicating a message, but looking at the people and seeing that they can picture what I'm talking about. They don't just hear it, they can see it in their own minds. I spend a lot of time executive coaching, a lot of time in boardrooms, a lot of time doing cultural transformation and consulting assignments. Therefore, I can step on stage and keynote about things I actually experience. So it's just not great quotes and great this. I get a chance to see what these principles look like implement it because I get to be part of the implementation. So that's what I love. Uh, sometimes it's fun to just be on a stage and inspire and connect. But then I also get the benefit of doing the real work that comes with taking that message and really getting it embedded. And I think that's what also uh, allows me to enjoy what I'm keynoting because I know what I'm talking about actually works. I was in Florida. I had a gentleman who was leading an organization. He says, Eric, tell my people, let them know. What happens if they don't perform well? So what do you mean? Tell them what happens in the NFL. When players don't perform well, when things don't go well, you know, tell them what happens. I said, are you sure you want me to tell them? He said, yes. I said, okay. They fired a coach. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how he looked at me. I'm like, hey, you asked the question. <laughs> that's the answer, right? I will also raise the point when it comes to expectations of customers. You all know that you experience it every day. But what used to be considered just probably a year ago, exceeding expectations to your customers today is simply meeting their expectations. Not that you're not working as hard, it's just their expectations change. So what was, you know, killing it a year or two years ago is now just reasonable service. And the minute it becomes reasonable service, they start looking elsewhere if there's not a way you're holding on to them. So the real question is how do we maintain? How do we hold on? Not only how do we grow, but how do we grow with the ones we already have? 
Sometimes it's not new customers who come through. It's just the customers we have right now expanding what we do with them. That moment has changed my life in so many areas. Hmm. Every time I walk down my hallway and my 16 year old daughter is in her room and it's time for a real conversation, but instead of making a left into her room, I run around the wedge and keep walking straight. Every single time I don't have a performance management conversation with somebody on my team because I just don't want to hurt their feelings. So I let them continuously perform at a level that's beneath their potential. Guess what I'm doing? I'm running around the wedge. Every single time I don't confront an issue with my wife, knowing good and well it needs to be worked on, I run around the wedge. I'm not meant to run around the wedge, I'm meant to run through the wedge. Fear is the problem. On the other, going through the wedge gets us to where we want to go. Is this making some sense? My question to you is what wedge do you need to run through? What conversation is necessary? Many times a leader's success is measured by the number of uncomfortable conversations they're willing to have, not comfortable ones. And so for you right now, what's the wedge that you need to run through? And here, think about this. At the level of success you're already having, and you keep identifying new wedges, oh my God, you will reach places the majority of the world has never arrived at. But it doesn't matter. Do not let fear create any wedge in your life or comfort in any wedge in your life. Go right through it. They had a room this size of all their top salespeople. And I asked a question, Does, who in the room knows who the top, around the top 10 salespeople are? At least, you know, five of the top 10. Almost every hand in the room went up. My next question was, how many of you would desire to be in that group? Almost every hand up. Then I asked the last question. How many of you have called them? How many of you have taken the time to go visit them? How many of you have? I swear, maybe 20 hands went up. I said, this is good news. Those 20 hands, you're on your way. Because for some reason, everybody else who knows what works, people who are willing to share it, won't go have the conversation. You know what it reminds me of during, during my playing days? My number was 18, one of my best friends was Eddie Carter, number 81. What did Eddie and I have in common? We were on the bench, watching every single game. If you looked at the film, you would see 1,881 or 8,118. <laughs> and what were we doing together? Complaining about why we weren't on the field. Talking about it, finding it. Have you noticed complainers find each other? It's amazing how it works. I, I mean, we make each other comfortable in the fact that we're all performing far beneath our potential. That, I mean, that's how it works. Why? Because I know I should be honoring him and finding out what he does, but I'd rather talk about him from over here, give reasons why he plays. Oh, yeah, well, I would be able to play too if I was over there. <laughs> if I knew him back then, like my coach doesn't want to win, right? So what am I saying? What I'm saying is, it would be a better idea that I also spend some time and encourage each other, can we find the ones who are doing it right? It's free information. They paid a tuition that I don't have to. I can learn from them. The reason is we're inspired by what we see, not just by what we hear about. This is why I really challenge leaders often, all the things and the stuff I'm gonna talk about today. It's, in, it's important that leaders become what I like to call inspired practitioners of what they preach. Inspired, it's my practice of it that inspires you, not just my discussion of it. You can see it in action. Everything I speak to from the stage, it's not just something I read, it's not just something I heard, there's credibility behind it because I've actually experienced what I'm talking about. Real life case studies, been there, done that, been through the conversations, been through the planning, been through the implementation, have endured all the things that go along with this message that's being shared. I don't like talking about something I heard. I prefer to speak about something I know. Now. The benefit of doing a lot of executive coaching is I've had the opportunity to walk alongside some fabulous leaders. And not just leaders for a couple years, I've been working with some of these leaders for over 15 years. From when they went from a 
a store manager or a district manager to now they're a CEO and a couple of them have been CEO for some some of the largest Fortune 500 companies. One is uh, in charge of the whole global leadership for a Fortune 50 company. The opportunities to walk alongside these leaders on their journey is proof that many of these principles discussed about work. There's nothing new under the sun. But my passion and excitement about the information is I've seen them work in my own life. Therefore, anytime I speak to an audience, my goal always is be as authentic as I possibly can. That means what I'm talking about, I've seen it work. If I haven't seen it work, it won't come out of my mouth. Don't look anybody in the face. <laughs> Kale starts taking off his watch. <laughs> Guys are taking off their necklaces and putting it in their pockets. Because the four of us are walking down the stairs like this, not looking at anybody. <laughs> There's barely anybody down there, but the four of us are standing right next to each other like this. <laughs> because we don't want anybody to rob us. <laughs> Last thought I want to leave with you. I want to thank every single one of you. I want to thank you for what you do. I want to thank you for your level of success. But I also tell you, please, you've already done it, but please leave this place better than you found it. Pour everything that you have in you, please pour it into someone else so they can keep this thing going. Thank you so much for having me, appreciate it, thank you, thank you. God bless you, thank you so much for having me.